Hey guys, welcome back to Guy's Stuff. Today I've got another one of my favorite recipes and favorite meats, salmon. What I'm going to be doing today is smoking it, much like the barbecued ribs that you might have seen in the last video. This is a very simple recipe, and if you can't tell, I love barbecuing, I love smoking. It's just an easy, delicious way to make all kinds of stuff. There's pretty much nothing out there that doesn't cook very well low and slow. And that's what we're going to be doing to this. Now, I've got, like ribs, a lot of different ways that I prepare and do salmon. This is going to be one of my all-time favorites. If you've ever been to the store, if you're a big fan of salmon, you might have seen the little prepackaged smoked salmon slices, basically. And they go for like seven, eight, sometimes ten bucks, just for a little piece, you know, a little steak, about this size. Well, we can make that for easily a third of the cost by getting it in a nice, big, thick cut and doing it ourselves. Now, when you go to buy salmon at the store, you got a couple choices. You're going to see fresh caught, usually from Alaska, at least around here, and farm raised. The difference being how the meat is actually laid out, how thick it is, what it's good for. The fresh caught has a nice flavor, but it tends to be better for pan frying or grilling or searing. The meat itself is denser. You'll find that it's a lot redder, but it's very thin. If you're smoking, if you're going for nice, thick cut, plateable steaks that you want to do low and slow, you need thick cut. So I suggest you get the farm raised. Try out different fish. Um, this is a piece from a local grocery store that I get sometimes. It depends on if it's on sale. They often have really good deals. I picked this up yesterday for $5.99 a pound, and when they go on sale like that, I can't help not buy them. I mean, they're just awesome for that price. But if I want the tip-top salmon, even thicker than this, you can see that this piece here, this is a good inch thick right through the center cut here. That's that's really thick. It's actually about an inch and a half right at this point to the board. So, I mean, that's really great. Tons of oil in here. All these striations, this meat is at an angle, and after it's smoked, these just peel away like butter and they melt in your mouth, especially here where it's thick. So that's what you want to look for. But if I want the absolute cream of the crop, I go a little farther down to a little fish market that imports them from Scotland. And oh my God, I don't know what it is about that fish. It's even thicker, more oily. I mean, even these thin parts are thicker. It is just delicious fish, but it's 10 bucks a pound. So, you know, it depends on uh, if I'm just doing something for a quick recipe like this. This is actually going to be eaten the next day. I'm not going to eat this hot. Oh, you could, you can. There's no bad side about doing that. But I love it the next day where it cools off, and then you get exactly like those little pre packs you get. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. So, in the future, I'll show you some more salmon recipes, but that's what we're going to do today really easy to make. Now if you just want the standard stuff, which we're going to do today, all you need is coarse sea salt and fresh ground pepper. That's all that's on those little pre-packed ones. You can put on other other types of spices. You can do a blackening on top. Uh, you can do a Cajun or a jerk. You know, if you want something a little spicier, throw on some cayenne. You know, that depends on what kind of flavor you want the next day. I just love the sea salt and black pepper and the salmon and the oil. That all mixes so perfectly especially the next day. So that's what we're going to do today. You do need to be fairly liberal with the salt. Uh, you do need to use coarse salt. Do not use regular fine or table salt. Okay, This stuff will just eat through the fish, turn it to mush. You need salt that stays together the whole time and is still relatively chunky at the end. So that's what you need. The first thing we're going to do is just easily prep it and cut it into single size portions. You need a sharp knife because this skin on the bottom is very very tough. If you don't have a razor sharp knife it is not going to go through this. This is like cutting through rubber and uh, yeah it's a pain in the butt believe me. So we're just going to easily slice these up. Not too big. You want them plateable. You want them you know single size servings and easily removable off the grill. So Keep it an inch and a half wide, and be careful not to squish it down with your hand. It is a pretty fragile fish, especially raw. And then we're just going to put on our seasonings. And all you do for the salt, you 
You want a nice even coat. Make sure you get all the way to the edges. And again, this is both for flavor and to give a nice crust on the top. And to help dry it out and really bring out that smoky flavor, especially after it's cooled down. So fairly liberal. You can see it's already starting to kind of mix in and it's hard to see here where I sprinkled it, but believe me, it's there. And then again for the peppercorn, a little fish in my fingers here. Absolutely a must to have fresh pepper. And you can be very generous with this. This is all for flavor. And when you're doing it smoked for the next day, the more the better, believe me. These actual chunks of peppercorn, they're filled with oil and flavor. I can smell it as it's releasing now. And the next day, that is just almost sweet mixed with the fish. If you don't cook with fresh pepper, if you're just used to the table, little pepper shaker, this is day and night. This is not like just regular table black pepper. And when you do grind it, make sure you have it on a very coarse setting. Just basically, as coarse as it'll get, you want huge chunks coming out. It'll be a mix. You still have a lot of small stuff that falls through. But you need the stuff that's large for texture and flavor. Coat everything all the way to the edges. these days I'm gonna get an electric grinder. Doing the big stuff's kind of a pain. Alright, well that looks good. Like I said, a nice even coat. So now we've got our separate fish sections. This is gonna go on the grill basically as is. You don't do anything to the underside. The skin is simply gonna go on the grill and you'll see when I'm done it just peels right off. You don't have to do anything special doing it this way. All right, now let's go prep the grill. Really easy, standard stuff. The only difference between this and doing something normal like wings or ribs is we're only gonna use maybe three quarters of a chimney because we have to keep the temperatures down. You cannot cook this at a temperature approaching 300 degrees or it really messes up the meat. So let's go do our grill. All right, first things first, we gotta clean off this grill. A lot of people are under the impression that you wanna Keep all of the old stuff on the grill for added flavor. In my mind, that is just gross. No point in doing that whatsoever. So keep a nice clean grate. Then we're gonna make sure that our ash pit is nice and clean. You don't want a big mound of burnt ash in there. That will impede the airflow. So clean it out. any unburnt coals or side here. Now we're ready to start off our new chimney. Like I said, we're going to start with about a three-quarter chimney on this one. Got paper packed in here. Again, really need to use this tool. Super easy. Light it up and let it go. I like to hold it up a little bit, get the flames really going. And then set it down once they've caught the paper. All right, that's it. 20 minutes, we'll come back. Those coals will be hot, ready to pour on. We'll start smoking the fish. All right, the coals are hot, ready to pour on. I'm gonna do them over on the side. You wanna cook with indirect heat. And 
and you want to put on your wood, you can use these big chunks again, or you can use the small chips. If you use the small chips, you just soak them in water. These are just going to generate our smoke. Ooh, it's hot. Stay up there. Okay, stay there. There we go. All right. You don't have to worry about those wood chips burning up. Let's put, put the lid on that's just going to smoke down. Put our grate on. What I like to do is rotate the grate each time. That way it cleans off one side that's over the fire. And the last time you cooked with it. And then the side you're actually putting your meat on is already nice and clean. So that's going to sit there. Here we have our fish ready to go on. Now, all you want to do is put the skin side down. You want the thickest side of the fish towards the heat. You're going to put this all the way up against the other side of the grill. You want the thinnest pieces as far away as possible. Nothing special, you just want to lay them down. They will shrink a little bit, so fit them up there tight as you can. This will just help the thinner parts cook more evenly. They don't dry out as much. there. That's good to go. Now, like I said, you want to cook this two and a quarter. If you don't have a thermometer, you absolutely need to get one for fish. It's especially sensitive. Ribs, you know, they're a little more tolerable. I know that on my Weber here, with between three quarters and a full chimney, putting these top vents one third open, bottom ones full, that's going to get me right where I need to be. But experiment with your grill, especially if you're using gas. You need to check the actual thermometer. Now you can do this recipe or any kind of fish like this with an actual meat thermometer and you know cook it to a specific temperature. I believe, I want to say 170, 180 is a good temperature for salmon. But I actually do this by eye. I'm going to come back. I know that I, I'm, I've got this recipe down, so I know what to do. And I'm going to show you what to look for. I do it by eye. And there's certain things on the fish that are going to tell you it's absolutely ready. We're going to be looking for just a slight smoky crust on the outside, on the top. The bottom is almost, it's going to be like the meat is almost separating from the skin. And sometimes, if you get an especially oily cut, it will. The skin will stick to the grate and you can just put a spatula on there and the meat just lifts right off. It's like on a, a layer of oily fat. Now, we're not breaking down any tough meat. There's no connective tissue like beef or pork. This is just cooking the fish. You don't want to overcook it. That's why we need the temperatures really low on this. If you go above 250, it makes that, that meat into almost a mush. I mean, it's not good hot or cold. You can ruin it. So keep it real low. We're going to go about an hour and a half and check it, and we'll see how it's looking. All right, we're an hour in. Let's take a look and see how things are progressing. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. It's smelling even better. You can see on the side we've got a nice coating of smoke ring. It's firm to the touch. Still has some juices coming out. That's right about where we want it. It's not too long to go. Maybe another half an hour. You can see that there's a little bit of juice here. And if we just lift up on the meat, let's see if I can get it on camera better. You can see it's just separating from the skin. That's exactly what we want to look for. We're just going to let it go a little bit more. I want to see some of this white oil coming out a little bit more. We still have a nice sheen, though, on the meat. It's not drying out. If we start seeing that go away, we've gone too far. And even on these thin parts, not dry at all. So maybe about another half an hour, 
and it's going to be absolutely perfect. All right, see you in a bit. One and a half hours in, and we are ready. Just starting to form a nice little crust. Still a nice bit of oil coming out. Gently lifting off the skin. Perfect, ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and plate these. I'm just use a nice spatula. It lift right up. We'll take them inside. All right, they are ready to plate. Now, like I said, there's two ways you can do this. You can eat these right now. There's absolutely nothing else you need to do. They're hot. Ooh, they're delicious. Let's see if I can show you here. Ooh, really hot off the grill. Absolutely perfectly done. Flaky, moist. Absolutely perfect. Nice little crust on the top. The larger pieces will ooh, ha, ha, just separate. You can see that they just peel apart and it just melts in your mouth. Delicious fish. Something I love doing with it. Sides are completely up to you, of course. But this Uncle Ben's ready rice. I love the butter and garlic. Makes a perfect complement to the fish. One bag's good for two meals, so if you're cooking for two, bam, there you go. You know, if you're extra hungry, you get two pieces. Now this particular one, like I was saying earlier, some of the fish, when it's done perfectly, comes right off the skin on the grill. For those that are left on, it comes right off. Super easy, nothing you need to do. Just moist and tender fish. Now. My favorite thing to do, you can have your meal now, but my favorite thing to do is to then take the rest, wrap it in aluminum foil, and chill it overnight at least. It will become the oiliest, most delicious smoked salmon you've ever had. I mean, better than the stuff you get from the store and at a fraction of the price. I paid, like I said, $5.99 a pound for this. It was something like three pounds of fish, you know, dirt cheap. It's a third of the price of pre-made. You can do whatever you want on top. This, like you saw, just has the salt and pepper, which is the traditional. Mix and match, do whatever you want, play around. It's really, really good stuff and really easy to do. All right, so that's been the smoked salmon. Thanks for watching Guy Stuff again. We'll see you next time.